my name is Sky and I'm going to show you how to create a 2.5D scene inside of Kubrick. The first thing we'll need to do is log in inside of Kubrick. You will then see our image generator and the first thing that will probably catch your eye is this prompt suggestion box. You can choose one of these prompts that we've prepared for you. And when you choose to use a prompt, it doesn't only prefill the prompts, but also the settings that we think goes best with it. Now let's start from scratch. We can choose to either put in our own prompt or we can also upload an image from our computer or we can choose something that we've created beforehand. So I've prepared a prompt for today uh, that I'm going to input here. It is a beautiful, realistic, dark, highly cinematic fantasy close-up shot of a romantic path towards a modern concrete organic shaped grey spa in the foreground in the mountains at night. And I'm going to input here a bunch of negative prompts, the things that we don't want to see in this image. And I want to generate this at a resolution of 1280 by 768. We can go up to a max of 1 million pixels. And we have four models to work with, the stable diffusion base model and three cubic trained models on more cinematic footage. Let's stick with sci-fi and go to the advanced settings. The sampling method is how the image is being processed and they're all slightly different. I like to stick with Euler A because it has this smooth kind of outcome, um, but it takes a lot of experimenting to find out your favorites. Steps is the amount of iterations that the diffusion model will run. When you hire this to, for example, 50, it gets more detailed, but also a bit slower. Now C of G scale is how much the prompt influences your result. And if you put it high, like for example, 15, it will also up the contrast. And when you put it really low, it can become a bit of a vague image. So we usually stick around six or seven. The seed is the starting noise that the image starts with. And you can change the seed for a different image, or you can stick with the same seed and slightly change the prompt, which gives you a little bit more control with the same image. But let's generate this. And here we have our results. Now we can download this image to our computer, or we can choose to open this in our segment and edit window. And this window you enter on the segmentation screen. As you can see, we have here on the left segmentation tool, on the right two options that you can work with, but I'll come back to that later. Let me first show you the other tools, like the selection tool. We work only with smart layers, so there is no way that your image will decrease in quality when you downscale it and bring it back to the original size. Our resize tool, it lets you expand the canvas. For example, if we want a more horizontal image, we can expand the canvas. And if we move this image here and then go, for example, to in painting, we can also expand image beyond, beyond its borders. So let's type here a prompt and say we want here a moody mountain landscape because we basically want to um, extend this what we're seeing with more mountain and we don't want mist and fog because we want nice clear lines for later segmentation so let's generate that and here we have an image that we can work with that's more horizontal so we have brush eraser but let's come back to segmentation tool and what we want to do is create three plates the back which is the sky the mountains in the middle ground and then this basically this whole spa as a foreground. Now for taking out one specific object, semantic segmentation works the best. So let's segment everything. And you will soon see that this cuts the image in all the objects that it can find. And you can hide and display different layers to see the different objects. But all we really care about right now is this sky. So we can remove the rest of the layers like this and everything else. Let's remove that and let's call this original. And then let's inpaint the sky. We want this back plate to be the full image. So we extend the box and then call this cloudy sky. Let's remove mist and fog and then generate this.
And now we have a very nice backplate for our parallax effect. Let's call this backplate. And then we can move on to our middle plates. And to do that, we go back to segmentation. Let's copy the original. And we want to take out only these mountains here and the sky. So let's select this and then calculate a depth map on this layer. And the depth map gives you a slider that you can choose the range uh, that you want this depth to be displayed. So right now I'm just going to bring it down till we only see a piece of the sky and a piece of the mountains. Like so. And then we can add this to segments. Now the difference between these layers is that one has a depth map and one doesn't. And you can bring back the, the depth, but we don't need that for now. So let's delete this and work only with this copy. So in, in painting, we can choose here to say, for example, an empty, empty gray mountain landscape in the distance. And I would make that maybe rocky mountain landscape. And let's generate that. And there we have our full landscape. Now, for the parallax effect, you'll probably need to see through this layer to the back plate. So we need to remove the sky and we can do that best with the semantic segmentation. And there we go. Now we can basically just remove the sky. Uh, we see that a little piece of the sky on the left is left over. So I'm trying to find out which layer that is so I can clean that up a bit. Uh, but let's remove the sky first and then, yeah, see when I remove this, I can clearly see the sky on the left, so when I'm in the right layer, I can now remove a little bit of that. That will help with the cleaning up. But as you can see, there's still a little bit of cleaning up to do. So, okay, let's merge these layers. We can delete the before. Then we do need to bring this back to the right position. And yes, then we can basically start um, cleaning this. And we are working on some better cleaning edges tools, like softening, uh, soft brush, some specific selection tools like magic wand. Um, but right now we just use the eraser. Alright, so now that we have that, we can see through this plate to the back layer. So this is our middle plate and all that's left to do is create a front plate. So we copy the original and hide the ones under it and then let's make another depth map. And when we adjust the slider, this time we go in a different direction so we only see the foregrounds. We don't want it to cut off buildings so we will have to do a little bit of removing the sky. So we rem remove again the depth map layer and then go to the eraser tool to start cleaning up these edges. All right, so that is basically our front plate. And we kind of got everything we need now for the parallax effect, so the 2.5D setup. Uh, let me show you a few more things. Um, we can, for example, create an empty layer, which we don't really need right now. Uh, we can download all the segments. It will download as a zip archive. Now let me show you in the folder. When I extract this zip archive, we get there all the different layers. There we go. So as you see, it also exported our original and the three plates. Now we can always import this folder and bring back all the plates you've been working on. So that's our temporary saving. As you can see, they're all back now. Um, but yeah. I guess this is all I wanted to show and when we 
close this window, we can choose to download and close or to discard and close. So yeah, that's kind of the end of this small tutorial. When you have these plates, you can upscale them, bring them into your media server or 3D program. Um, we are also working on an upscaling tool inside of Kubrick, which will make it even easier. Um, I hope you enjoyed this workflow and I hope you get to try it out yourself. We are very interested in your feedback. Please leave it in our Discord and we hope you will enjoy Kubrick a lot.